evening, parents. Welcome to our back to school night. My name is Senora Rivas, and I will be your child's Spanish teacher for this semester. I would like to begin by sharing with you a short presentation. First, I want to um, show you my contact information. Should you ever have any questions or any concerns, please uh, reach out. Uh, my email address is srivas at heartdistrict.org. Let me tell you a little bit about myself. Um, I was born in Ecuador. I came to the United States at the age of 12. I attended one of our local junior high and high school. I am married. I have three children. I've been teaching Spanish since 2004, and my bachelor's degree is in Spanish language and culture. So what does learning look like for students right now? So every time that we meet, students have to log on to Zoom to be able to meet with me and receive um, live class. When entering Zoom, students have to have their first name and last name on the screen. They have to show their face at all times. Our class, it's still very interactive. So students have to show me their face and they have to participate. Now, learning is going to be a combination of synchronous and asynchronous instruction. All the curriculum and all of the supportive components are in our Google Classroom. Google Classroom is going to be used for me to push out material for students. So anytime that we do notes in the class or anytime that I need them to complete a specific assignment, everything will be given through Google Classroom. If I have an announcement to make, I will post that announcement on the Google Classroom stream. Now, something else that we will be using is our online super site. The super site, it's an online program that goes with our textbook that has online activities for the students to complete. These online activities are very different. Um, we have listening activities, we have fill in the blanks, we have speaking activities. So they will be doing a combination of all. Now, what do we need for the class? Uh, for this class, we need a computer. We are going to need a printer. I've been asking students to print out their vocabulary sheets and their notes and keep a binder where they can put these. When we are in class, they are constantly having to use their binder, excuse me, to look at their notes and to look at their vocabulary. So it's important that they get these things printed out. Um, they may need earbuds, um, a textbook, and highlighter, red pen, and also paper. So what does our classroom routine look like and what's earning pesos all about? So when students enter the Zoom meeting, once roll is taken, um, they will be presented with a warm up. Now warm ups are usually a small little reteaching of a lesson that I covered the class before. Once warm ups are completed, we do anuncios. Anuncios is a time where students get to speak in the target language. They are very guided, so I will be asking them to apply a specific skill when they are giving me that anuncio. Now, the way that they are rewarded and the way that they earn a grade for wanting to speak and also for participating would be through pesos. So I do pesos on uh, a system called Dojo Points. It is done on my iPad and every time students earn a peso for participation or for speaking, they can hear a little ding, ding for the pesos they are receiving. Now, pesos are not optional. This is part of their grade. So their goal is to be able to earn 10 pesos for every six class meeting. Now, when we meet on Wednesdays, our schedule is a little bit crazy because it's such a short period of time. So what I told students was that Wednesdays will be like an extra day that I am giving them to earn pesos without counting that as an official date of earning them. Now, assignments. So all assignments are going to be completed 
in class with me. Like when they're with me in that Zoom meeting, we are going to complete all the work that we have to do. If for whatever reason your child does not finish during that time, then they will have to complete whatever they did not finish at home. Assignments are going to be due the same day that they are assigned, unless it's some kind of a uh, project of some sort, but typically if it's some sort of worksheet or a paragraph they're writing, they would have to complete it that same day and turn it in for full credit. Now I do accept late work until the day of the chapter test. So late work will be for partial credit. So after the day of the exam, I can no longer take that late work. So that's something to be mindful about. Now, for assessments, we will be taking some vocabulary quizzes, some grammar quizzes, and some chapter exams. Now, all assessments are going to be taken on the super site, what I explained earlier, it's our online program, or on a Google form. Now, correct spelling and usage of accent marks is required. So when students are typing in their answer, they have to be careful with their spelling and they have to make sure that accent marks are put where they are needed. I have provided students with a accent mark cheat sheet that they can use so they know how to mark accent marks um, on a Google form. Grades are going to be updated weekly on Infinite Campus. So when you are wondering if your child is missing an assignment or if they have gotten credit for an assignment, please make sure you check Infinite Campus and not Google Classroom because my gradebook is on Infinite Campus. Now, this is the grading scale. So speaking and participation is going to be 20% of their grade. Assignments, 25% of their grade, quizzes, 20% of their grade, and then exams will be 35% of their grade. Now, if your child is needing extra help, this is something that I've been talking to them about already. Um, on Mondays, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays, we do have flex time. Our flex time is from 1.40 to 3.30. If a student is needing help, they need to email me so that I can set up a Zoom meeting and they can receive that additional support. If they don't email me, I don't know that they need help. So they have to do that first in order for us to set up that meeting and then be able to work on whatever concept they need help with. Now, what, how to succeed in my class. So students were told since the beginning of this semester that they are not going to be given homework for say, but I've been telling them that if they want to look at this as homework, they could, um, but they are responsible to study and review their vocabulary on Quizlet. So all of the vocabulary is given to them at the beginning of the chapter, and they need to be practicing this vocabulary so that by the time the test comes or the quiz comes, they are ready for that. It's also a good idea if they review their grammar notes. On the back of the grammar notes, I always have practice exercises. Typically, those um practice exercises resemble how their exams or quizzes are going to be. So one of the things I've been telling them is to make sure to go back and redo those just to know and for themselves to know that they actually understand the concept. Now, another way to succeed in class is to participate in class. So asking questions and making sure that they are earning enough pesos by speaking in the target language would be a, gr a good way to be successful. Um, another thing is it's really nice that students have that flex time in their schedule. So I always tell them, take advantage of it. Take advantage of all of your teachers, ask them to meet with you during flex time and ask questions. So this is my little presentation for today. Should you have any questions or anything else that I did not cover that you wish to know, please don't hesitate to email me. Thank you for taking the time to listen. Adios.